Hey folks, welcome to the Ask Sabado channel. I'm Sabado. Um, for those of you that haven't been here before, welcome. Uh, for those of you that have been here uh, to this channel before, welcome back. It's, it's great to see you. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to retire at 51 and uh, am now working with others to help them realize you know, their dream of retirement. I recognize that everybody's not going to be able to retire at 51. Everybody's not going to be able to retire early. But if you take a look at the things that create the most stress in our lives, a lot of times those stem around money and how we view money. And I also recognize that for a lot of us, we weren't uh, raised with the financial acumen to even understand how possible or impossible retirement is. And so the purpose of my channel is to just give you insights, give you perspectives and provide you a couple of tools and tricks um, to help you get to that place of financial freedom. So you know, you can get to the place where you can make the decision on what you want to do as opposed to having to go in and, and just work. Um, before I get into it, though, I want to let you know that, um, you know, there's never anything that's being sold here. I'll never ask you any questions, but I do suggest that you um, subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and, and get the notifications. Uh, I put up content on a regular on a regular basis um, every Wednesday and Saturday. And I just talk about the topics that inspire me, or in, in some cases, like the topic we're gonna to talk about today, uh, it's, uh, it's a subscriber question. Uh, I, I think that the channel here is, is really about you. Um, I'm already retired, I wanna help you. And so I, the only way I can help you is by you letting me know what's some of the information that might be helpful for you as you look at your uh, your work or your early retirement or your post-retirement journey because there's a lot of things that we deal with as a retiree that you know quite frankly other people just don't understand and so you know i'm here to talk about some of those as well so um, on that note uh let's get into it so i had a subscriber ask me today um and he said to me he says i have forty thousand dollars coming what should i do with it and so First thing I did, and I, I want to make sure everybody out here knows, is uh, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not certified in, in financial matters. Uh, I didn't even play a uh, financial wizard on TV, but I, I have retired, have learned a few things, and you know, have a general idea of what directions to point you that are going to help you uh, get the information you need for your unique circumstances. Uh, but the first thing I wanted to do when he mentioned that to me is I wanted to get a little bit of background. I wanted to understand what's your current situation? What are you doing now in terms of saving? And so he had mentioned that he has a 401k, his wife has a 401k, uh, he has a 403b, and he has a Roth IRA. Um, I asked him if he had any kids, and he says he has two kids. They're grown, and they're out of the house. Um, and the one question I didn't ask him, I didn't want to ask, and I didn't want to ask was about his debt situation, because this, I think, plays a, a key role. But what I suggested to him is when he gets this money, he's going to be better off to find an account that's going to be driven by market factors. And so, and I'll give you an example of what I mean. Uh, I think we all are familiar with 401ks. Those are usually employee spon or employer sponsored plans that'll have a, an employer match. But you can only put money into those accounts through normal payroll deduction, uh, just because they're they're pre tax accounts, and you can't touch those until you're 59 and a half. Um, you have 457 plans, which are um, highly qualified or non qualified deferred compensation plans, which have a different set of rules and sometimes give you access to your money a little bit sooner, but it's still on a pre-tax basis. And so if you don't have a 457 plan or if you're on a 457 plan, make sure that you um, take a look at the, at the rules. The other one is a 403B. The 403B is nice because you could put money into the 403B. Uh, I'm sorry, not the 403B, the uh, Roth IRA. You could put money into your Roth IRA and your, your money will grow and you will not have to pay taxes on the capital gains for that. So you'll take after tax dollars, so money that is uh, net. So you, in, your, in your paycheck, you got your gross amount, which is what they pay you. We're going to pay you a million dollars and they take out taxes and union dues and everything else. And then you get your net. And so whatever you get out of your net is already taxed. That's what I mean when I say uh, post-tax dollars. And so you take those post-tax dollars, you put them into an account, usually some type of mutual fund or something of that nature, 
And what that'll do is grow over time. But the beauty of this is that when you actually have access to your money, which again is after 59 and a half, you don't have to pay taxes on uh, the capital gains from your Roth IRA. So your money grows tax-free. Uh, the one thing about Roth IRAs, um, and again, I would I would ask any of you that are looking at going down that path, take a look and see what the law is. Because there, at one point, there was, or if there's any financial gurus uh, in the audience here, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, there were rules around um, um, limitations in terms of um, income limitations for uh, Roth IRAs and and so on. And then, um, and then just to close a loop on 403Bs. 403Bs are just like 401Ks with a couple of different, um, you know, behind the scenes rules to them. So we don't want to get down, down that path. And and one, one other option that I mentioned to them, and it's something that came to me, was um, we talked about um, money market accounts. Uh, there are money market accounts. So you could go to Bank of America and open up a, a money market account. And then you also have uh, money market funds. And so there's funds that are funded by, or like mutual funds, but they're funded by um, all of the different interests and the and the money markets. And and what's beautiful about this, and again, I'm not an economist, and I know somebody's going to say you're not an economist. What are you talking about? And if if, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments because I want to make sure that this information is 100 percent accurate. But the way it was explained to me is that when the Fed raises interest rates, that's when you start to find savings rates pay at a higher rate money markets pay at a higher rate and so on. And so uh, there's a there's one fund that I'm working with now, and I can't remember the name of it, it's through our financial advisor, but it's paying 5% per month, uh, which is nice uh, on a money market account. Now, as they start looking at lowering interest rates and, and coming into the soft landing, as the Fed calls it, those interest rates will go down. It won't always be doing that. But at this period of time, it's uh, it's something that's, that's worth uh, taking a look at it. Um, and I, I, I suggested this as a potential option to him because, again, when you look at the four, uh, the, the Roth IRAs, I just wasn't sure how his Roth IRA was set up. Was his Roth IRA on his own? Was it through a, uh, a brokerage account? Uh, or did he get it through his employer? And sometimes there's different rules about how you can get money into those Roth IRAs uh, because of some of those rules. And I don't want him to get, don't want him to get taxed at a... Uh, at an at a, at a incredible rate. The other thing I mentioned to him is that it may not be a bad idea to, uh, to open a brokerage account. Um, right now, we're at, a, we're at a time where, in general, the markets are doing better than they had been in the previous years and are on the upswing. Um, and the beauty of a, of a mutual fund is a mutual fund is a fund, is, is a mutual fund. So it's, it's funded, it's a whole group of stocks that are all brought together into this one fund that then creates um, that creates value as that fund. So it's a piece of mutual pieces of, of a bunch of stocks that make up one fund. And the beauty of these is they give you a bit of diversification. So you're not just investing in one company. Uh, recently, I put money into, uh, I bought some NVIDIA stock and NVIDIA is like the darling on Wall Street and I started losing a little bit of money from it. Now, don't get me wrong, you should never invest for the short term. So my investment window is always five years, 10 years. So I'm not worried about it because I think NVIDIA is going to play in a, a, uh, continue to play an incredible piece of the, of the AI revolution. Uh, but, but that's what happens. And so if you, if you need that money and you go into one stock, then all of your eggs are in one basket. With a money market, fund, or I'm sorry, with a mutual fund, you don't have to worry about that because, you know, the stock, they go down, they go up, but you're not going to be tied into just one stock. It's not if Apple goes down, then you lose everything. Or if NVIDIA goes down, you lose everything. Or if Microsoft goes down, you lose everything. Or if Dow Chemicals goes down, you lose everything. There's other stocks in there that are designed to balance. And the beauty of uh, a, mu a lot of mutual funds is they pay dividends. And so not only do you have the money that you put into that, but every quarter, some companies take some of what they make, some of their profits, and they turn those into dividends and pay them back to the shareholders. So some stocks pay as much as 5%, 10%. I was looking at YouTube the other day, and I saw there's a whole bunch of videos about dividend stocks and people making money and making a whole living on dividends. It's not my strategy. I don't condone it. 
uh, it's not my thing, but I think it's a good way to augment your portfolio. So you continue to grow that wealth, um, grow that wealth over time. And so we talked a little bit about putting money into dividend accounts and um, I'm sorry, into, into, into mutual funds. And, and the other thing that we talked a little bit about are ETFs, exchange trade uh, traded funds. And so, you know, when you look at the NASDAQ, you look at the S&P 500, you look at the Dow, you know, those are all indexes. So those are groups of funds that are indicators. And the best way I can explain it are indicators for how the market's doing. And so the, the, the NASDAQ is like the, the top 400 companies and the Dow is the X number of companies and they're in the manufacturing and all these other spaces. And the NASDAQ has certain companies in it, but they're called exchanges. And so what, what, what you have is you have some funds that align with the companies that are in some of these different funds. So when you see uh, the NASDAQ is up 40 points or the S&P is up 10 points or the Dow's up 300 points, that tells you that on average, the companies inside of that index um, have gone up. And so, and that's a good safe way to, um, to invest. And I suggested to them, that's a good safe way to invest uh, some of this money uh, because it gives him, it helps him understand it in relation to the broader market. It's easier to understand, less complicated, less cumbersome. Um, and the other thing I, I asked him is I, I said to him, where are your, 401ks and your 403bs uh, located. And he says they're with Fidelity. So I suggested to him that he go online and look in the in the research, uh, news and research section of the Fidelity website. And you can look for funds where you don't have to pay a bunch of fees, no load funds. And you can look at Fidelity funds and you can see how they're doing. And I looked up today and saw there was a semiconductor fund that was uh, up 45%, uh, I think, over the last year. So Again, I'm not into chasing trends. I'm not into chasing dollars in that way. I'm a, I'm a long-term value investor, as I like to call it. But what I do think is important is to start looking at, if I make a little bit of money, where am I going to put that money? Because you know one of the differences between people that have money and people that don't is people that haven't historically had access to large sums of cash think of long, large sums of cash in terms of what can I buy with this? And people with money look at long-term, I'm um, sorry, large sums of cash and say, you know, how can I invest this? How can I use this to help build a better future? And then what happens is it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because you want to make four or 5% a year, but then you have a 20% year, 25% year, you start getting dividends kicking in, then it becomes intoxicating. Um, and so, but the, the key is, and, and, when I, when I correspond with him again, I'm going to mention to him that the key here is making sure that he manages his debt because you can, you can have as much, you can make as much of a, of a big uh, uh, draw, or I'm sorry, um, um, deposit into, uh, into a mutual fund. You can buy as much as you want, but if your debt picture is still out there at 19% per month APR, it's going to eat you up. It's not going to do you any good. Then what you do is you waste all your time. And so, um, you know, so, you know, really helping them understand the connection between debt and um, between between debt and, and, and building wealth, because, you know, before you know it, it's going to be a, uh, you know, retirement's going to be here. So uh, so I, I think what he's going to do. So I suggested to him, take a look at that and maybe he can call somebody at Fidelity. So if he doesn't have a brokerage account, he could set up a brokerage account through Fidelity and they'll help him get on his way um, at a very low cost and perhaps at a lower cost because he already has the other product through him. So again, what, one of the things that I enjoy about uh, this channel is uh, the opportunity to correspond with people all around the world um, and, and really share my story in an effort to, to help them. Uh, I don't have products that I'm selling. I don't have memberships that I'm selling. I don't have you know, a suite of tools that I could sell you for the low price of $19.99. But what I do have is I have a very down to earth perspective about how I got to retirement and the choices that I made. Um, and those choices are from everything from, you know, not getting, not using credit cards to paying off my cars when I can to, uh, you know, not going to debt and, and staying below my means and making sure that I was married to somebody who has the same view of money as I do. Because again, these are the types of things 
that no matter how good of a plan you put together, if you're not aligned on the money, that creates that can create a, a problem, whether it's it's friction between the two of you or just thinking that you have a plan and you really don't because somebody else has a, has a different idea about it. So, um, so I'm going to talk to him again, uh, see really where his, uh, see really where his, where his head's at. Uh, it's a lot of information. And again, those of us from, um, underrepresented communities, you know, uh, myself being African American, I know that there's just not a lot of conversation about money. We didn't grow up in communities that had a lot of money. And so, we had to learn and listen to people and, and hear from people like me to you, help us understand, you know, here's how the money works. Here's how you save your money. And, you know, the, the one thing that I, I really hope to see is that there's the, uh, the person that's a subscriber on the channel that wins the lottery and comes back and says, you know, Salvador, I really want to thank you for planting a seed in my head that I had to put the money in to invest it as opposed to just going out and buying a bunch of expensive stuff. And so now I'm able to spend time with my family, not worried about money and have the right perspective. And so, again, it all comes down to perspective. I don't have all the answers, but I'm here to help you find them. Um, please let me know what you think about my advice to, to him. I, you know, I, I, I gave the best advice that I could. I think the, uh, I do think that if, you know, we, we've got to start looking at money in terms of value as opposed to what we can buy. Um, because if we don't grow our money, then it comes and goes and it's just one big transaction. And that's, in a lot of cases, that's what's got us here. And that's not the, that's not where we want to, that's not where we want to go, you know, as we go forward. So on that note, I'll let you get back to whatever you're doing, but I just want to tell you, have a good rest of your day. And if there's other topics that you have that, um, or things that are on your mind that you want to talk about, um, please feel free to leave it in the comments. And again, you can you can get me in the comments. You can get me on my Instagram page. You can get me on my Facebook page. Uh, you can send me a message anywhere or you can send me an email. I believe my email is set up to my um, my YouTube account. It's the real Salvador Gigante at uh, gmail.com. So if you want to reach out to me, reach out to me and I, I try to get back to everybody and, I, and usually only about at this stage of the game, we're only about, you're only about two episodes out if you have a good question. So, and every question is a good question. So on that note, thank you for taking your time. I know you could have been anywhere else in the world right now, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. Have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.